Welcome back to Sports Blitz Live, everybody. Well, I don't know what else to do except just say we're going to welcome in the new most interesting man in the world, the former Alabama linebacker, Keith McCants. How you doing, Keith? I'm doing great, guys. How you guys are doing today? Uh, doing perfect. Uh, Keith, you and I have been talking a lot off air, and it, some of the stuff, your life has been absolutely incredible. Why don't we start it this way? Why don't you tell everybody where you are right now? Right now, um, I'm in Spring Hill, Florida with my children. Um, my daughter's getting ready to go to college. She got a seven in pre-med school, and she graduated on the third, and she, she I got to move her into a dorm in Florida State. FSU, um, I think, on the 20th, on the, on the 22nd, and uh, my son, my also one of my, one of my sons, he, I'm here with him, and he had a, what brought me back to Florida. He had a heart condition, which is heart rate is speed at 60, 60 percent, and then there's, there's not enough blood pumping to the to the um, brain, and he passes out. So I've been here training with him, and training with him, I started to lose weight myself, and we both enjoyed it. And then it's about time for me to be a be a father again so that's this is what i'm doing now they living life on life terms as i know it well of course you were an all-american in alabama in 1989 you really kind of succeeded derek thomas at alabama i would dare anybody to say there were two better linebackers going back to back for the same school as we're putting a highlight up right now of the 89 iron bowl where you chased down shane wadsden how often do you get asked about that Man, every time I come to say to Alabama, somebody bring that play, particular play up, Shane Watson. That kid was very fast, and I was unfortunate. I was, I was fast then. I bet I could walk now, but, man, talk about, talk about the two great linebackers before me. was was Carlene's been and Derry Thomas, two exceptional uh, 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 linebackers. And if I had to pick out all three, I would say Derry Thomas probably was the best better out, of, out of the three of us. That guy really took me on his wing and then taught me in the game and taught me how to rush the quarterback and taught me different stuff. And Carnegie was more of a, a linebacker that was that, that, that could stop the run and make 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 play calling and stuff like that. So and I, I I just did a little bit of both. So I had a little bit of both of them in me. Well, you were the CBS Defensive Player of the Year nationally in 1989. You had 119 tackles and four sacks. You were the number four pick in the 1990 NFL draft by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but you thought you were going number one, didn't you? Well, yeah, I was, I was listed as number one. I was told I would be number one, but at the last minute, um, Jerry Glenville and the Atlanta Falcons decided they, they didn't want a linebacker, so they put up some kind of scheme, a scam. And I said, that's one of the things that they do in the National Football League, and they they, they made a deal with Ray Perkins and this and that, and I ended up going number four to, to uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, and, of course, I tell you, it's, it's so wild how some of the things happened in your career. First of all, the previous year, Derek Thomas was taken number four in the draft, just like you were taken number four in the draft. Um, the number five pick right behind you in your year was Junior Seau. Those are some pretty big names you were associated with. Oh yeah, man! If you put us all together, man, we we was just it's just like everybody is good and it's good, good. And when you get to the National Football League, there was a few players could stand out, and I think I would have had a much better career if in the National Football League if they wouldn't have moved the defensive end. You move your person to defensive end now, you can isolate that that person. You can isolate his talent. I was a more of a middle linebacker, which I can go side to side, sideline to sideline. That's what Jimmy say I did. And Derek Thomas was a specialist. He was uh, he was specialized at, at second and quarterback. It was just different styles of linebackers that play the game, um, like Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis is a, one of the best linebackers I've ever seen, and then and, and that. he put me in the main frame, frame that I would that, that I would that I would have played like like that's how I played in college. Like he played in the pro on sideline to sideline, and. A lot of deep people don't know what defense are designed for certain players to make certain plays. And then you have to be on the inside to, to uh, be a player to know, to know that. Uh, something a lot of people may not know, you and Emmett Smith have been close over the years. And Emmett actually called you 
uh, to talk about it and seek advice about going pro, didn't he? Yeah, man, that, that was a, that's a funny story, man. We was in college, and um, we was roommates on the road and stuff, and um, when I was talking to him, and, and we called, uh, uh, and he called me and said, hey, Keith, you go first. You announce you're going first. I said, nah, you announce you're going first. And we were like, nah, you do it. You, you do it. We going back and forth. And then um, I don't know how I made the decision, uh, how we came up that I was going to go first, but... I ended up going for a big, making the first announcement uh, uh, about leaving school as a junior. And here's a, a little bit of trivia for people who remember this, and I remember it very well. You were actually one of the players that stepped in to break up the fight on the sidelines between Kevin Gilbride, the offensive coordinator of the then the Houston Oilers, and Buddy Ryan, who was the defensive coordinator. Talk about that. Oh, man, I'm going to tell you something. We were saying, it's funny you mentioned that because guess who we was playing? We were playing against Kansas City Chiefs, and the, the buddy Ryan knew that Derrick Thomas would eat us alive if we kept us kids staying in that run and shoot the offense. And he was telling us, he was trying to tell Kevin Bill and Alvin Gilbride to get out of it because we had to leave, we were winning. Joe Montana was the quarterback at the, at the time, you know what I'm saying? So we were, we were stuck, we, 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 it was going to be a fight. We just won game away from the going to the Super Bowl. And Kevin Gilbride was like, let me run my, let me run offense, you run the defense. But he said, but we, we, we're doing this for the greater good of the whole team, we going to lose. And Derek Thomas, show him enough, came right in that corner and told Warren Moon apart, man. And I was, I was like, man, and then, and then they got into it. They, they really got into it. And that, I can't remember the words that were said, but, but I did step between them. And I got fined for that. I got fined $10,000 for grabbing, grabbing Buddy Ryan. I should have grabbed the offensive guy. <laughs> uh, well... <laughs> Some other interesting things about you. First of all, you played in the infamous Hurricane Bowl between Alabama and Texas A&M. Uh, you were the first African-American Marine police officer in Alabama. You're an avid scuba diver. You're actually a master diver, right? Yes, I'm a master diver. And that came about because I, 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 when I came to the National Football League, I, I, bought, it, I bought a yacht. And I was, and I, and I learned how to, I, I, I got my license, captain license for boating and stuff, and I got into scuba diving, which is a whole totally different world down there. And that out of all the things I have lost and I missed the most, I missed going out on my, on my boat, scuba, scuba diving. And uh, that, that right there was something, man, that I, that, that I really loved and loved, loved. And to tell you how I got that job, man, is that um, the, the governor, Don Sigelman and some of some of his um, people, they 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 really stepped up to the plate and helped me out on that one because I had all the credentials. I majored in criminal justice. I had the qualifications. I had the know how, and I went out there and I, it, 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 it it is a little second nature to me. Uh, Driving the boat, scuba diving, uh, working on the water, and the. the um, uh, the, force, the background was criminal justice and knowing the law. So it's right in, but a lot of a lot of African American people, they do not like the water and they will not go out there in the DC before water. They will not go scuba diving. I did think my deep was down like 180 some feet. So I, that, that was right up my alley. Well, some, and it kept me in shape, by the way. Some other interesting tidbits that just blew me away, Keith. You were once on a program called Tailgating with Cato, Cato Kalen. Uh, you've been yeah. on Huffington Post Live a few, on a few occasions as a guest. You were on 30 for 30's uh, Broke series uh, of the, the, the one called Broke, I should say. You were one of Alabama's yeah. top 10 linebackers of all time. Uh, you actually dated Pepper of Salt and Pepper, or at least went out with a couple of times. Oh, uh, yeah, we, we, we went out with a couple, a couple of times, and uh, we met at the All-Star game, and our basketball All-Star game was, well, who was that? Um, Bill Cosby and uh, Jack Nicholson and Ronnie Lott. We all sitting up there talking, and these guys come up, and this, this girl called Spinderella in the group introduced me to Pepper, and <laughs> we kind of hung out for the rest of the night and, and, and got to know each other. But, yeah, that was, that was interesting. Well, one thing I know you would like to talk a little bit about, um, Keith, unfortunately, 
you've had 29 surgeries in your lifetime. That's an astronomical number. And I know you want to talk a little bit about the NFL and, and how they hadn't necessarily helped you all the time or helped any player in that regard. Well, um, it's funny you mention that because I have some people, I have some, um, I have some children, some, some guys, their children come up, call me and ask me for advice about, uh, about, 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 about the NFL and then the pitching and this stuff like that. One thing about the NFL is that you got to realize it's, it's, it's a business, but it's a cold-hearted business. And it's a difference between playing college and just playing pro. When you play for college, you play strictly for the love and the tradition of the, of the, of the, of the, of the team that you're with. And, and, and it's fun, and you and you play with passion. Now, when you get to the NFL, you got the same passion, you got the same love for the game. But when they come, when they become a business like that, you play for passion and love. But the owners and 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 and, and, the, and the GM and the coaches, it's a strictly business, it's strictly about money. And um, I think, well, let me elaborate about this first. Uh, Junior Seau was a very, very good friend of mine. Andre Waters who played for the Philadelphia Eagles, and we also played with Houston Oilers together and uh, Arizona Cardinals together. Uh, Bobby Petraeus who played for, for, for Tampa Bay, and Jeff Arm played for Houston Oilers with me. These guys have committed suicide. And see, I, I feel that it should be an extra program and an extra program because a lot of people don't know what goes on behind the closed doors of the National Football League. When you mentioned I had 29 surgeries, yeah, I had 29 surgeries due to the football injuries, and I got shot up. I became addicted to drugs. I was an addict for a long time. Now I have two years clean. I'm doing good. And I got some things working in the, in, in the works right now that which going to allow me to go to every high school in the country, high school and college in the country, and ex- express and to share uh, my life experience as, as, a, as a player. And, um... People don't know, those guys that I just mentioned, they all committed suicide. I tried to commit suicide three times. I cut my throat. I, I played Russian roulette. I hung myself in jail when I went to jail. You know what I'm saying? But somehow or another, I lost the will to live, and God gave it back to me. Now I feel compelled to go out and do what's right and help other people. And because uh, every child that plays football from Little League on this, all up to college, dream is to be in the National Football League. Now, getting there is one thing. Staying there is another thing. And when you get there, I took shots. Man, I had 20 hours I took shots. My knees were messed up. My shoulder was messed up. Balls popping out of my shoulder. I'm taking shots of morphine. I'm taking shots of cortisone. I'm taking 185 lower tabs a week just to stay out there on that field to play because of the passion and the love I have for the game, not knowing that I'm turning into an addict. I became, I became an addict. I became a junkie out there in the National Football League. And then I got kicked to the curb when they, when they kind of came and told me, I was okay, so you're addicted. I didn't know what addiction was. And they kicked me to the curb. They pushed me to the side and got went to the next guy. And I had to pay over $600,000 out of my pocket just for the medical bill. And see, now I'm not the only player that does that. And, uh, man, I'm telling you something. What people don't know about Keith McCann's, I was homeless for like three to three years. I really wasn't homeless, but I was homeless. I'm going to tell you why. I had six concussions. I lived on the streets for two, for, for two and a half years, eating out the garbage cans, taking showers at the, taking showers and stuff at the gas station. I didn't even know who I was or where I was until my sister came and told me that I had a, I still was a millionaire and didn't know it. Because, but the concussion was so bad and my memory was so bad, I was out there living in the streets. And see, I don't want that to happen to nobody. And I'm lucky to survive it. That's why I feel that I know God, I know that there's a God, and I know that I'm here for a reason. And I'm going to spread the word, and I'm going to tell you something, I'm going to help people across the country. I got something going, coming, coming out big, man. And when it comes, i tell you what, it's going to shake, it's going to shake the nation. Well, Keith, you've got an absolutely amazing story. You've led one heck of a life. I know there have been a lot of ups and downs, but uh, here's hoping you have a lot more ups in the future, buddy. And we're going to have you on the show again, okay? All right, thank you so much, man. I tell all the Alabama fans, all the Auburn, all the Auburn fans out there, man. I tell you, thank you so much for having me on, man. I love you guys, and God bless. 
And tell them your Twitter handle real quick, Keith. Yeah, uh, at Keith McCants. Twitter, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to at Keith McCants on Twitter. Give me a shout out on there and I'll get an update and stuff. And I'll uh, glad to answer any questions that anybody have for me. Thank you, buddy. We'll have you on again, okay? All right. Thank you so much, man. Call me later, buddy. We'll do it. That was Keith McCants, great number 86 from Alabama, one of the most talented players I've ever seen at the University of Alabama. I mean that with all sincerity. He was an incredible talent at Murphy High School, goes on to Alabama, drafted number four by the Tampa Bay Bucks. He moved around the NFL a little bit. He did change positions that did affect his career. There's no doubt about it. 29 surgeries. Uh, the addiction to painkillers has certainly been a demon in his life, but um, here's hoping Keith McCants can turn it around because he's got one heck of a story. We'll be back in just a minute with more Sports Blitz Live.